Cheers, everybody. <laughs> cheers. Cheers. We don't, we don't have anything to cheers to. No, we don't have any beer in our hands, but that's okay. You know, because not. you know what? <laughs> it's true. Forgive us. But you know what? We have some beer. Right there. Yes, sir. But it's not ready to drink yet. Well, it is. But we're going to show you how to get it ready. We are. Yeah, because some of us, we want to drink that beer right away. I agree. So, I'm, uh, I'm going to step behind the camera for this one. And Alex is going to walk us through a more detailed video on how to force carbonate your beer. You might remember some of you people from years ago. That you people. You people, our viewers. <laughs> that, uh, you know, and there goes my phone. I should have put my phone on silent. Last time we were in this room, my <laughs> I phone went right. off. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to step behind the camera. He's going to give us a more detailed approach on how to force carbonate. Uh, that's the plan. And maybe some different uh, methods you could go about doing it. Yeah, exactly. So, here we go. Now my phone's going off. It's the wives. It probably is. It is. Alright, so let's figure out how to force carbonate this keg. We do have a video up already on Smarty Pints about this, but it was kind of something that I was in the middle of just force carbonating the keg, so Graham started filming, so this, I hope, is going to be a little more structured. But uh, yeah, here we go. Here's our empty carboy. Literally just filled this keg with it. And so first thing you want to do is grab your trusty CO2 tank. Figure out which side is which, so this side is out and this side is in, so it's gas, it's going to go in. We're going to plop it on there, and then we're going to turn on the CO2. Um, right now we are up at 35 PSI. I like to get my beer carbonated quickly, so the higher the pressure, the faster it carbonates. Also, the colder the beer is, the faster it carbonates. So uh, this is actually still at fermentation temperature since we just kegged it. But if you can cold crash your beer first before it goes into the keg or after it's in the keg, it will carbonate much faster. So first thing to do is now that headspace above the beer is at 35 PSI. You just want to bleed it. And so this is purging any air, then any oxygen that might be in that headspace. And I like to do this about three times or so until you're fairly confident that it's just carbon dioxide in there. And so, if you're very quiet, you can hear Graham's phone, but you can also hear gas escaping the cylinder. So right now, it's relatively quiet, but watch this. If you take your keg and you just kind of shake it like this, Listen, there's more gas escaping. So what happens is when you shake the keg, it breaks up the surface tension, it increases the surface area, and it increases the points of contact between that 35 PSI headspace of CO2 and the beer itself. So the more it's agitated, the quicker and easier all of that CO2 is gonna go into solution. Uh, another trick, is you can take this keg and just lay it on its side. So what that does is now, instead of the surface just being this little circle, this whole length of the keg is now the surface. So there are many more points of contact between that CO2 and that beer. And you can just sit back and just gently rock it back and forth. And you'll hear CO2 hissing out of the cylinder. And so it's just going into solution. Another trick, this is probably my favorite method of force carbonating, is switch the disconnects up. So this is the gas disconnect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pop on a liquid disconnect. You might be asking yourself, Alex, why are you doing that? It's not liquid. Well, the reason I'm doing it is because I want to be able to hook this up to the liquid side. The reason being is the gas side, the dip tube, is only that long. And so it's just going to hit that headspace and pressurize it. But on the liquid side, that dip tube goes all the way down to the bottom. So if we hook this up to here, it's going to shoot CO2 down through the bottom and then bubble it up through the top. 
But one very, very important thing to be aware of here is number one, make sure your valve is open. And then another good idea is just bleed the headspace a little bit because you want the PSI set on your regulator always to be higher than the pressure inside the keg. If not, if there's higher pressure inside the keg and you hook this up, you're going to shoot beer up through your regulator. And if there's no check valve, you'll possibly ruin it, damage it, at the very least have to disassemble it. Uh, so here we go. If you're very quiet, you'll be able to hear the CO2 hit through and bubble up through the top. So all that CO2 is just bubbling up from the bottom. And so it's going to go into solution very fast. Probably the most common question at this point is, well, how long do I do it for? Uh, that depends. Uh, it depends on the temperature of the beer and the PSI that you set it at. Uh, there is a very handy chart that references temperature of beer versus PSI of CO2 and how many volumes of CO2 are in the beer. Uh, Graham is going to be nice and put a link to it right down there. Check it out. Um, the easiest, most foolproof way to do it is find the temperature that your kegerator, refrigerator, chest freezer, whatever it is that you store your beer in, what temperature that's set at, and then figure out how many volumes of CO2 you want in the beer. We'll also put a, a link to a handy little chart here that shows the typical volumes of CO2 per style of beer. So you find that happy medium and then follow that graph to the side and it'll show you what PSI to set it at. So all you have to do is dial in the PSI on your regulator to the PSI that it says it needs to be at, at whatever temperature your fridge is at, to get whatever volumes of CO2 you are desiring. And then just wait. And it obviously depends on the temperature and how, uh, how much CO2 you want in your beer to achieve that. So uh, that's the best way to dial in exactly what you want. But for me, I basically just do what I just did. 35 PSI, a little bubble up through. I'm gonna put in the chest freezer. It's gonna cool down to my serving temperature. Tomorrow I'm gonna to come back, hit it again with the CO2 a couple times during the day, and then by the end of the day, it should be nice and carbonated and ready to drink. Um, if you've got a party going on in two hours, then chill this sucker as fast as possible, leave it hooked up to the CO2 at 35, 40 PSI, and you should be good. Maybe every time you walk in and out, shake up the keg a little bit. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the short and dirty of it. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to comment on this video, find us on Facebook, uh, send us smoke signals, whatever. <laughs> smoke signals, I like that. That was a good video. Well, thank you. Props to you and your foot and your fingers and everything for you showing know, everything. I was actually a foot model before I started brewing beer. Ooh, you yeah, got that nice feet. right there. All right. Well, enough of our creepiness. <laughs> We'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Adios. All right, it's been a day since we kegged that beer and tried to force carbonate it. So it's been sitting overnight at about 35 PSI. Of course, that PSI has gone down as the beer has absorbed the, uh, the CO2. It was not hooked up to the CO2 tank, so whatever was in the headspace in the keg was all that it had. About three or four hours ago, I hit it with the CO2 tank again and brought it back up to 35 PSI. I did it again through the downspout, so that way the CO2 would percolate up. And uh, now let's, uh, let's pour some and, and see what we're looking like. Uh, it's important to note that the keg has been chilled, so it is at serving temperature. Uh, that way the CO2 will hopefully be in solution a lot easier than when it was at fermentation temperature. Uh, I've got this little pigtail we're going to hook up to it. Uh, but first, what we're going to have to do is hook it up to CO2. This time we're going through the inside, through the gas. And then what we're going to do is release the pressure. If we try to serve it at 30 some odd PSI, it's just going to come flying out of this little thing. Pressure has been released. 
Um, I have the regulator here. Let me see if you guys can see that. Yeah, it's at about hmm, just under 5 psi. And that's for dispensing. So we'll hook up this little pig tab. If I can get it on there. And let's see if we have carbonation. But there's definitely some carbonation in there. So that is just basically 24 hours. Uh, just hit the keg twice with 35 psi CO2 and it's carbonated. So there you go. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to put them below or uh, find us on Facebook and ask us there. Until next time, cheers. <laughs>